Thank you for tuning in to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today I'd like to introduce Sasha Dobler. Mm -hmm. He has a website called Abrupt Earth Changes. Now earlier this month I was reading articles about the flu epidemic and how deadly it's been. I reviewed articles on the Black Death and fears of the plague outbreak in Africa. I started to wonder how these outbreaks lined up with timelines of the Grand Solar Minimum. To my surprise, I stumbled upon a brilliant ebook called Black Death and the Abrupt Earth Changes in the 14th Century. I'll leave a link in the description below. As I mentioned in a live hangout about this correlation I was researching, Sasha actually commented in the video about his book that I had found a day earlier, and we've connected to discuss his research. Sasha's research, climate collapse, solid cosmic intruders, comet fragments, dust, tectonic activity, outgassing from the ground, ozone layer depletion, and even electric anomalies in the atmosphere. Sasha, thanks for coming on to the Grand Solar Minimum today. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Sasha. How you doing? Hi, I'm fine. Thanks. thanks for coming on. We really appreciate you taking a little time with us and discuss uh, some Grand Solar Minimum information. Mm -hmm. Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, so with your book, Black Death and the Abrupt Earth Changes of the 14th Century, what piqued your interest to actually do such an extensive uh, research on this? There were several things that came together here. And my long time interest for history and climate also and astronomy. But actually, I came on to this from um, inconsistency in infection patterns from ancient uh, pandemics. And from that, I stumbled over uh, Mike Bailey's book about the Black Death and the Cosmic Connection. And I found it was actually much more than just uh, a short series of uh, cosmic anomalies or comet impacts or comet flybys. But uh, the whole climate downturn that actually started in the 1290s already and first um, that was uh, basically at the start of the wolf minimum and there were famines already in 1315 to 20 and it turned out that the whole death toll was uh, enormous at the time and it was a decades long calamity really that was closely related to solar activity and other anomalies in the sky. Now, when we say correlating evidence with grand solar minimums, we don't mean every minimum, but there's evidence in some. How, how would you how would you say has it happened one time, two times? Yeah. How often does this correlate these epidemics with with the minimums? Right, it's important to distinguish between. Uh, the recent minima that we had, like the Schwer Mounder, usually um, these are more gradual effects with the weather anomaly. And it's, uh, I would like to point out that not every grand solar minimum uh, would expect to have such a colossal loss of life as in this uh, 1348 disaster. I could only identify two similar events. The other one was at the end of the Roman Empire at around 540. So this is not a, a fear-mongering part that um, nothing implies that this happens in every grand solar minimum. It was a much more complex affair at the time. So basically, you know, with people following the grand solar minimum, um, you know, your website is, is pretty self-explanatory, abrupt earth changes. So, you know, it's proven in history that the climate and everything can make a sudden shift downward or upward and, you know, tracing those effects, what caused it, uh, what did people at that time go through and whatnot. Yeah, and I, I like to add that uh, I, I agree with the whole gradual um, process with the climate. Uh, so far, it seems that way. Um, a lot of folks were calling for a below average temps for where in the region that we are in. And I, I feel like that so far everything is happening like it should be. Now, there are some people that are saying that uh, the solar activity itself uh, has sped up this minimum. In fact, they think we've uh, jumped ahead a year and a half in time as far as that goes. 
But I, I could mm-hmm. tell over the last couple of seasons – uh, some of them had started to get back to like, you know, we've been mild for a while and this year we've noticed the cold. I'm sure there's a lot of people who've noticed the cold that aren't used to the cold. And I've always kind of believed this from the first time I've ever heard about the grand solar minimum, which was, I feel like this will be a gradual change. Now what happens, like I said, this, a lot of scientists are trying to correlate an ice age in the 2030s and 2050s. You know, I, I'm I'm just trying to keep track of the grand solar minimum right now and what we see in front of us. But I think it's really important. And just like Rolf had said to us as well, mankind is going to survive this. You know, when you talk about yeah. the loss of life that we had in the 1348 through uh, 1353, you know, we're, we're talking about we have way better medicine. We're advanced in so many ways. Um, you, you know, it's just going to take a little bit more harder, physical, demanding kind of work. Mm-hmm. Or right. it could be a sudden shift where it's pretty, pretty bad. It's hard to say. And that's what a lot of people, they, a lot of people, I feel when they're researching it, they want to latch on to an answer like it's the answer. And it's really, truly, there's not an answer. It's one of those wait and see, watch it and observe kind of uh, things because who really knows, you know, no one. Yes, exactly. My mother is more... Um live as if it's never going to happen and prepare as if it's happening That's right. tomorrow. And then you're all set. And I'm, I'm, th- I'm thinking some people will be uh, surprised, maybe positively or negatively, or, when their know, predictions don't come true. I'm not really a friend of, I even don't call it the grand solar minimum. I talk about the next grand solar minimum, whether the solar cycle 24 is actually the kickoff, or if we get another bit of slack, it will have to show. But um, I would say prepare as if it's it. But if we get some more time, then take advantage of that too. Yes, and that's the thing too. It's uh, this as we monitor this uh, solar minimum, this grand solar minimum. Um, it, it's not something that we're going to be able to see all the results for overnight. It's, this is, you know, it's going to take some time. It's a wait and see. Uh, Valentina Zarkovi even said it, you know, it, we'll see three to five years. We'll talk then. And, but, you know, certainly right now, some of the predictions that were made for, I know this year, this season for the winter anyway, has come true. So with the mm-hmm. less solar activity right now, we're sitting at nine straight days without sunspots. I think we're at like 56. I mean, it's young in the year. I get that, but. Um, we've only had four sunspot groupings since December. And so definitely it's starting to show off and on throughout 17, we had some uh, streaks without spots, but the solar activity is declining. And um, absolutely, and it's going to get interesting. And the, the cosmic rays is kind of something that Mari and I were, we really want to discuss because um, I, it does so many things, not just um, to affect the, to affect the climate, but health mm-hmm. as well. And yeah, that's mm-hmm. why we brought you on. Mm-hmm. What so, do you, uh, but... with your findings in your original book, how do you feel these cosmic intruders have affected society in the past? And then also we'll add to that with Valentina's uh, work and she, she outlines the, how the supernova, it was supernova Vela Jr., the supernova, Mm-hmm. Uh, had an effect during plague times. I, f- I found that really interesting. Like all three instances when this this sort of revelation came to me, you know, watching these outbreaks and seeing the plagues in Africa and thinking about, you know, our climate changing, the earth changing, and then stumbling upon that same day Valentina's mention of the plague with uh, in regards to the supernova Vela Jr. happening around, uh, what was it, 1290? Mm-hmm. And then the volcano was so, going off. Yeah. Actually, the volcanoes were in 1259, uh, the biggest spike in uh, sulfuric acid at the time already. But there were other um, a sequence of um, eruptions in these 50 years or so around that. I haven't found a simple answer what the plague was caused or how exactly cosmic rays would have um, kicked this off. Obviously, there wasn't the same 
um, pandemic crisis in each uh, drop off into a solar minimum. And what I came up with, there were an endless number of uh, earth, earth changes that seemed to have influenced the whole affair. And one thing was already the, the famine at 1315. That's mostly left out after the discussion about uh, the Black Death. When you hear about the Black Death and how it was the biggest casualty incidents of uh, pandemics, or one of the, the biggest mass die-offs, and some historians still claim it was only 30% of the European population, but then uh, what you don't hear is that only 35 years earlier, a starvation due to crop loss and bad weather already killed 30%. So I came up with numbers that add up to 70% within these 35 years, which was quite uh, drastic. But they, there seems um, the evidence is there for... Um, a whole range of anomalies they had that were possibly not directly related to the grand solar minimum or cosmic rays only because these effects didn't appear in uh, the other grand solar minimum except the 540 event. So people were talking about uh, foul odors coming out of the ground and uh, in the sea, then the black clouds of foul air, smoke coming over the sea, much lightning event, um, aurora effects. It's fascinating, the historical record that you've recorded in this ebook. Um, I highly recommend people uh, to take a look at it, and we'll we'll share it. Thank you for sharing that book. I mean, it's a free ebook, and. You have a, a book you're working on now? Uh, yes, I'm working on several things. For one, I'm trying to put together the uh, 540 uh, incident and uh, a longer piece that tries to connect the, the last about 2,300 years or so. When you did your research on the Black Death, of course, um, my concerns, I haven't, um, I know bits and pieces about what happened, but... Mm-hmm. With, with that being said, was there a? Um, you said you haven't nailed down a cause yet. Is that what? Is that what you said earlier? Not a definite um, single cause, which gotcha. uh, one could point to, but uh, a sequence of uh, environmental effects, and there were all kinds of um, strangenesses going on. Mass psychosis. Oh, wow. Um, people just losing it. I, I described it loosely as a zombie apocalypse. That all these uh, people dancing naked in the street and let their cattle run and just didn't care for anything. Quite, quite um, something. Wow. That people were telling from these times. And let me just see through the notes here just weird weird stuff happening in all in all directions with the uh, aurora anomalies and the lightnings and all the comet fragments they claimed to have seen and just yeah, before yeah. the play they said there was a pillar of fire over the pope's palace at Avignon, and i came up with some ideas what they might have seen but we just saw that uh, a aurora anomaly was it last February? And there was this pillar, this spiral. Uh, David talked about this also. There was this colorful spiral going up into the sky from the is aurora. That the Steve, or is uh, that? Is he talking about right. the uh, the anomaly? This it's called Steve. Right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. There were two actually, similar ones. One they called Steve, and then it was an actual. Uh, at the second time, it looked like a. Clint Curl current with the three filaments twisted. Oh, we've seen I've seen the, the picture, red, yeah. In the, in the mm -hmm. red sprites yep. as well. Is that what some of these uh, drawings you think they're trying to describe to people? The the, the old artwork that you see, like the, like in the beginning of your uh, ebook, very interesting illustration. Uh, you see the clouds. You see what appears to be mm -hmm. could be bright sun rays, or maybe it's lightning. Um, 
but do you think that's what they were trying to, they were trying to also document, you know, maybe the climate around them as well? Yeah, obviously, yeah, it's, it's anywhere. That's uh, what, um, what I was trying to point to. Of course, modern historians would say that's all made up. There right. was just one bacterium, of course, and nothing happened, nothing to see here. And I found in old texts, they were talking about things happening in the heavens and just miserable weather, of course, flooding and all sorts of anomalies, which um, must have caused, or can have caused the starvation alone and then the following health crises. But they saw some weird stuff, I'm absolutely sure. They were talking about the plague as the arrows. I made a chapter on that. Arrows this, arrows that. So right. Sometimes as the punishment from God. Sometimes it seems they're describing hail as, as arrows or lightning as arrows. But they were convinced that that was what made people sick. I have different languages and uh, further below of the arrow affair here and then uh, angels pouring vials of some poison over people. Yeah, so was... they, were, they were much concerned with uh, stuff happening in, in the heavens and not much concerned with uh, direct contagion from person to person. That seems to not have been a great concern. And it wasn't just because they were stupid and didn't know. Right they would have easily found out that there's uh, something spreading from person to person. But I can't exclude, of course, any infectious agent. They certainly had bacterial infection and fungi, obviously, with all this going on. But the consensus at the time was that this was um, an astronomical and was, for them, astrological event also. I'm just... Um looking at other papers coming in uh there it seems like more and more people in the science community are acknowledging these cosmic rays have a major uh impact on Mm -hmm. earth and just humans um even when it comes down to like flu pandemics so it's Mm -hmm. interesting to me to sort of dive into the research uh you know cosmic rays can alter dna and, you know, it, I, it got me thinking about how things evolve and mutate and, and all that. You know, you look at the wonder of how things have evolved in the past. It makes you wonder if these cosmic events actually were, were driven by cosmic rays mutating things and, and sort of evolving. Mm-hmm. There seems to be uh, some good evidence for that. Um by the way, Ben Davidson, of course, you're familiar with, probably most of your listeners. He does a lot about um, KP index and yeah. health issues. You're familiar with that. I made, made a whole a small chapter here with some, uh, some hypotheses on evolutionary effects that are related to space radiation and magnetic fields. And since we are learning more from mainstream scientists about uh, punctuated equilibrium, which means that the Darwinian evolution is not uh, gradual, but uh, punctuated by evolution bursts. That's what we see in the uh, archaeological record. Yes, it, it seems that also cultural um, developments or cultural and bursts would follow the um, would follow solar activity and cosmically induced earth changes. There is a now yes, um, things change after that. The um, the Black Death event ended the medieval warm period and the high medieval period with all the cathedral building and dumped us into a dark age but out of that came then the renaissance and later on enlightenment both actually were triggered in a 
in a, the trough of a solar minimum, interestingly. Yeah, I, it's definitely, it yeah. seems to me like a lot of people are sort of, they feel themselves awaking spiritually. So there's a lot more to it than, you know, the scientific aspect. You have that, that sort of quantum unknown of spirituality and people just sort of having that intuition within that things are changing. Some are, you know, feel more uh, the urgent need to be prepared for something, even though they don't know what. You know, it's sort of interesting to see it grow in society, this, this sort of awareness that something is changing, but no one able to really identify it. There seems to be a lot of people out there searching for answers, you know, trying to, to put their finger on what it is, it in parentheses is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting times at any rate, very yeah. interesting. We were very uh, fortunate to be born in this time, I think. I, I very, agree. I'm very, I um, consider myself privileged. I was going to ask too, uh, alongside with what you're saying right now about the great time to be alive, are you planning things for the Grand Solar Minimum? Or do you have an idea what you're going to be doing if things tend to get worse as far as the climate and then from there it could be famine? I, I know a lot of people think that um, there will be certain areas that just won't be able to grow whatsoever if this mm -hmm. deep minimum actually happens as it's being predicted. Did you have anything uh, specific that you were planning to do for this, or is it kind of just one of those um, take it as it comes? Um, a little bit of both, since uh, I'm not convinced of certain date when the yeah. uh, drop off will be. So, uh, as I said, prepare now and live as if nothing happens. But I have food, I have some food, and I think. Many people, maybe some of your listeners, don't have food and they think it's really complicated or expensive. Uh, so I'm, I'm often a little bit confused how, how few people are interested and I then know. you actually, how many people are interested and few actually act upon it. There's a lot of so, that. So, yes, that's one thing which is quite kind of curious. Um, on the other hand, you have the preppers, they, they don't care for climate, they go for asteroids and, you know, and social chaos and what else. I mean, it really can be anything. You know, X. There's a lot because, of people, you know, Planet X is one, that's a big thing in the YouTube that's... community and, you know... I, I won't really say my feelings about Planet X. I know scientists are saying there is a planet out there somewhere. Its influence on our solar system is yet to be known. Um, there's mm -hmm. some theories that people are saying it's it's hidden and cloaked by, well, by things. And, <laughs> and they have had people come out. And uh, uh, Planet Nine is what they've been calling it lately. That's the mm -hmm. last name I've heard for. And to me, the... What they're saying now is what they've been speculating for a couple of years, this planet that's massive, but it's on the very edge of the outer edge of the solar system. And, you know, that Mari and I were talking about um, the sun and being weaker during this minimum. And is it possible that there is a one of the planets in the solar system is maybe straining the sun on its connection, its magnetic connection to the sun? Is it possible that there's something outside the solar system that could be straining the sun's magnetic connections to other planets in the solar system? So, I mean, the more you get into the research of the grand solar minimum, we find people like you, Sasha, and then we find other people like um, who study the orbits. There's a, another guy out there who's made mm -hmm. a correlation with this certain uh, lineup of the orbits where I think... The four gas giants, all but Saturn, are on the same side, and Saturn is exactly the opposition of, I can't remember if it was uh, Jupiter or um, I think it Uranus. Was Jupiter, Saturn, it was, and it was Uranus. Neptune, Uranus, and Jupiter, and Saturn were the four planets that were every minimum the same uh, particular lineup happened. And it's mm -hmm. actually the Carl minimum, that's what it was. And actually, um, they are projecting the same well, planetary some lineup wanna, some people want to call it the carl minimum some people want right. to call it the eddy minimum i was just referring um, to who okay. came up mm -hmm. with it. but in 2050 is when this next uh planetary alignment is going to happen that's happened and mari and i just quickly checked uh, we didn't go through all the minimums 
but we checked back uh, with you know software solar scope, and we went back to the last uh, minimum, and sure enough, that what did? that orbit's there. Well, there's several research papers on planetary alignment and the grand solar minimums and um, the different poles on the on the planets yeah. and how that affects things. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's proven. What's interesting to me with researching the grand solar minimum is all the different outlets you can research that sort of lead, lead to the same answer. You can research uh ice core samples tree samples you know uh the the history of planetary cycles how they affected things in relation to minimums in the past and you know it's interesting to me you know where the science research is pointing to over the next 30 years say mm-hmm. well sasha was there anything you'd like to add to people who are listening and, and who are, you know, curious about your work? Well, one thing would be maybe as far as uh, contagious diseases go, there are more unknown unknowns, as uh, Donald Rumsfeld would say. And nothing is settled. I don't have an, I don't have definite answer what the Black Death was or the Justinian plague around 500. But if you also know that it's nothing stuff simple you get you get this little virus or bacterium and also we therefore for that reason be careful with vaccines i think most of your viewers were able to make a um, independent decision on that and do some research so that's one and as for preparations go lots of people uh, talk about safe safe areas or where where to be when and i'm not so keen on that i just have areas that i wouldn't want to be i've on my website i've on the upper right hand side i put this map of a insurance company munich ray and they just give a general overview over natural hazards yeah, not including not including a fla- flash freezing or a flash floods, but you get some some overview. Just the basically um, volcanic all volcanoes around there, and hurricanes. And I've found that some of the hurricane areas already have to be adjusted now with the storms that came in a few months ago and hit Portugal and. Ireland also, then hurricane-like storm in the Mediterranean, so things are moving a little bit. But I heard you guys have a flooding problem. <laughs> yeah. Is that, yeah but that's true. And, we have um, flooding problems bad here. We have ice jams. And, yeah, ice jams and the creeks are overflowing. We've been dealing with flooded basements and, and all that. Mm-hmm. We We get a lot of people asking us, where is there a safe place to go? Where should I relocate? And my answer always is, you know what? Something can happen anytime. Like, if something could happen tomorrow, the mm. next day, or anything. It could be, like, you get in a car accident, you have a health issue. You can't go through life in a state of fear. You sort of have to take your faith and just embrace the unknown and just be fearless in that faith that you're going to be all right even with unknown future ahead. You know, you can't control natural cycles or, or anything. So you just have to have that faith in the unknown that you're going to be okay. Because if, if you spend, you know, your short time on this planet worrying and fretting about it, you're going to miss all the little things in life that makes things so beautiful to be on this planet. So That's, that's true. But on the other hand, also... There's some some risks that are more or less easily avoid, avoidable or more foreseeable. So I personally wouldn't want to be in an area that was flooded recently or gets flooded regularly already. It could turn out completely different that you're going to have less flooding with some of the droughts that are expected in the minimum. But if you have volcanoes already in your backyards, then with the changing solar activity, you are likely to have more. So there's 
some some areas that can be avoided. But then faith and positive thinking is important too. So I'm not going to move far. I'm, I'm in Switzerland here. And it's going to be, at some point, it's going to be cold, of course. But I'm not even that worried about temperature itself. I think that's going to be quite a late um, problem for most most people. Well, in, the early, in the early stages, I would be more considering uh, floods and just precipitation. And what's going to affect agriculture is just what the uh, global warming crowd used to call global weirding. When they <laughs> they had to admit that it's not really warming a few years ago, they said, oh, no, it's global weirding. <laughs> and then... <laughs> That's kind of kind of tragic. They're they're mostly right. Well, they're completely wrong in the cause, but they're there's in a large degree right in the effect. So, which for most people, it's gonna reaffirm them that well, they said it's not it's not gonna be that hot, but we're gonna have more storms and more this, more that. A journalist. So that's, um, a journalist by the name of Hunter S. Thompson once said that when the going gets weird, the weird turn pro. So I kind of like to live by that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's good. Mm-hmm. So thank you for taking some time and just chatting with us. I find your book a huge resource of historical facts. And you said you translated books from German. You, so you, German, you, you, you... old, um, dead German, um, Mittelhochdeutsch. Medieval German okay. text also. So I encourage everyone to take a look at what you have compiled for historical record. Uh, you did a great job with that, and we'll post your, your links. Yeah, we're going to recommend your website and your book for sure. And um, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll have all our viewers have a look. That We have a lot of new people that are new to the topic, and I'm sure they're going to be fascinated with your findings. Um, as that. So we'll probably definitely get together and talk again because I think it's very important in this community to sort of share our thoughts and work together and try Mm -hmm. to find the answers. It's a very big puzzle that we're trying to piece together and I think everyone has something to contribute uh, when it comes to, to researching what's going on with our planet because, you know, it's, it's quite evident that there's change is happening mm-hmm. but it's, uh, it's time for a multidisciplinary approach to these uh, changing conditions we have yeah and i think it's really important for anyone researching the topic not to latch on to a particular answer just sort of take the information in and, and look at it objectively without grabbing on to a particular answer um i think that's where you know when you get into the politics of it who's right who's wrong who's warming who's cooling you know that Mm -hmm. uh, people get lost in the debate rather than actually sifting through all these research papers and facts and trying to you know discuss what the reality is so thank you for all your efforts Um, And thank you for taking the time to to come on the Green Solar Minimum channel and and discuss that with us today. Yes, it was a pleasure talking to you, Sasha. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me on. Anytime again, just call me. Awesome. Absolutely.